Whether we're working outside under the hot sun, inside a busy factory, or bundled up against the cold, physical exertion can make us hot and sweaty. And the hotter our workplace becomes, the hotter we can get. This strain on our ability to keep cool is called heat stress. Our bodies are strong, flexible, and capable of performing a variety of demanding tasks. But heat stress can interfere with its natural processes. When this happens, the results can be serious, even fatal. In this program, we'll look at how heat can stress the body, the different types of heat-related illnesses that can occur, and how to help someone who has become dangerously overheated. We will also discuss what you can do to stay cool when the heat's on in your workplace. Sometimes it's because of the weather. Sometimes it's the physical tasks we perform or even the nature of the facility we work in. But it's not unusual for us to get hot and sweaty on the job. Being overheated is not only uncomfortable, but it makes any job more difficult, and it can also affect our health. Fortunately, our body has physical processes that kick in automatically to help keep us cool. For example, the circulation of our blood can help to lower our body temperature. As our temperature rises, the circulatory system directs more blood flow to the surface of our skin. There, the blood gives up the excess heat it has absorbed to the air. Then it circulates back inside the body to pick up more heat. As the process continues, heat is pumped out of our body. When more cooling power is needed, our sweat glands go to work. They move heat out of the body in the form of warm water. The evaporation of the sweat cools our skin off as well. It's an effective system, but it does have a downside. Sweating depletes our body's supply of water and the vital minerals known as electrolytes. Running low on these substances can cause our body to malfunction. In extreme conditions, we can sweat out up to one quart of water and electrolytes an hour, which makes us thirsty. But we can't rely on our natural thirst alone to get us to drink enough to rehydrate ourselves. We need to make a conscious effort to take in even more liquids. So you should try to drink five to seven ounces of liquid every 15 or 20 minutes when you're sweating. Sports or electrolyte drinks can be a good option because they're formulated to replace the minerals that you're sweating out as well. But avoid drinks that contain alcohol or caffeine. They will only accelerate your water loss. Some medicines can do the same thing or have other adverse effects when you're overheated. Ask your doctor about any medication that you take to find out if it could cause problems when you're working in hot conditions. And watch what you eat in the heat as well. Hot meals raise your internal temperature. Heavy foods require more blood to be used for digestion, when that blood could be helping to cool you off instead. So stick to light, cool meals when you're working in the heat. Whenever we work or play in the heat, our body's natural cooling processes work hard to prevent us from becoming overheated. The greater the heat, the harder those processes have to work to cool us off, and the more likely they are to get out of whack. When these natural cooling defenses break down, we are in danger of developing heat-related illnesses, including heat syncope, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. For example, sometimes when our system tries to cool itself off by directing more blood to the skin, the other parts of our body can get too little blood. This can cause a person to lose consciousness or faint, a condition called heat syncope. Warning signs include dizziness and a rapid heartbeat. Heat syncope often occurs in people who are new to working in high heat conditions and can lead to serious injuries if the victim falls or loses control of a tool or vehicle when they faint. When we sweat a lot and fail to replace the vital minerals or electrolytes that we're losing, we can develop another heat-related illness known as heat cramps. Symptoms include painful cramping as well as involuntary jerking or spasming of the muscles, often in the calf, thigh, and shoulder. 
When our body runs low on both electrolytes and fluids, the result can be an illness called heat exhaustion. In addition to intense thirst, a person suffering from heat exhaustion may feel confused, dizzy, weak, and uncoordinated. They will also sweat profusely. Heat stroke, on the other hand, occurs when the body's natural cooling mechanisms break down completely. As a result, the victim is unable to sweat. Their skin will be flushed, very hot and dry. Other symptoms of heat stroke include a throbbing headache, rapid heartbeat, nausea, and vomiting. Heat stroke causes a person's body temperature to rise uncontrollably, which is extremely dangerous. This can cause damage to internal organs, including the brain, and can even be fatal. When you're experiencing any type of heat stress, it's important to pay attention to what your body tells you. If you ignore the symptoms of one heat-related illness, such as heat cramps, it can quickly develop into another one, such as heat exhaustion or heat stroke, which can be a lot more serious. Even when we do our best to protect ourselves from the heat, it is still possible for working in hot conditions to knock us for a loop. When that happens, it's important to know how to treat heat-related illnesses, because they can be serious, even life-threatening. Let's start by reviewing how heat can affect the body. When we get overheated, our system uses the sweating process in order to carry heat out of the body in the form of warm water. However, at the same time, sweating constantly depletes our reserves of water and vital minerals, electrolytes. If we don't make a point of replacing these substances, the lack of them can cause us to develop heat-related illnesses, such as heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. When a coworker develops a heat-related illness on the job, you need to address the causes directly. Get the victim out of the heat and into a cool environment. Have them sit or lie down and rest. Cool them off by bathing their head, face, and neck with cool water or applying wet towels or sheets. And give them cool water or an electrolyte beverage to drink. If possible, bring the victim into a shady, air-conditioned area. Remove any outerwear they have on and loosen any tight garments. If you think they may be experiencing heat stroke, Call for emergency medical assistance immediately. With heat stroke, it's also critical to lower their body temperature as soon as possible. There are several ways you can speed up the cooling process, including applying cold compresses to their armpits and groin, wetting down their clothing, directing a fan on them, placing them in a cool bath, and using ice or cold packs. You should stay with the victim and continue to cool them down until the EMTs arrive. Even though we often can't control how hot our work environment is, there are things that we can do to help handle the heat by preparing for it ahead of time. This can not only enable you to work more comfortably, it also helps you avoid the hazards of heat-related illnesses. For example, whenever possible, you should take a gradual approach to working in a high heat environment. This gives your body time to get used to the temperature. The average worker may need from 5 to 10 days to get fully acclimated, particularly in environments that are extremely hot. People who are in good physical condition can generally get used to high heat conditions more quickly. They can also perform better in the heat because their body and its muscles are lean and toned. When a person is overweight or has a lot of fatty tissue, their body's cooling system has to work that much harder to keep their temperature down. Choosing the right work clothes can be important to staying cool as well. Loose, lightweight clothing made of cotton or cotton blends helps you get rid of excess heat by allowing the air to circulate freely around you and wicking away much of your sweat. The color of the clothing you wear makes a difference too, especially if you're working in the sun. Black or other dark colors actually absorb heat, so you should avoid wearing them. Wear white and other light colors instead. 
They help keep you cooler by reflecting the heat. The same principle applies when you wear a light-colored hat to keep the hot sun off your head. And don't neglect the sunscreen. It not only prevents sunburn, it helps prevent the sunshine from heating up your skin as well. Remember to wear sunglasses too. Keeping the sun off your face and out of your eyes both protects you and helps you to feel cooler. If your work takes you into areas with intense levels of radiant heat, your employer may provide you with special protective clothing, such as reflective garments made of aluminized fabric. Another option is ice vests, which are often used by firefighters and other workers who are exposed to high heat. Your supervisor can tell you what type of protective clothing is best for keeping you cool and safe on the job. If you're working indoors, temperatures can sometimes be reduced to safe levels through the use of cooling equipment. These solutions are called engineering controls. Some of them, such as air conditioning and ventilation systems, can be built directly into a facility. Air conditioning can also be installed locally in windows or as freestanding units. Other engineering controls that can be built into a work environment include cooling systems that are attached directly to the machinery that gets hot, and reflective barriers that contain radiant heat given off by equipment or work processes. Portable fans such as oscillating and box type fans are also a popular and convenient way to keep cool. Of course, making sure the fan moves air in the right direction is important in controlling the heat. If you're working near a piece of equipment that produces heat, you should position the fan to blow the hot air away from your body. If there's a source of cooler air nearby, use the fan to blow it toward you. And depending on the time of the year, you may be able to use a fan to blow cool air into your work area from outside, or blow the hot air out. Speaking of portable fans, it's important to remember that HVAC systems and other built-in engineering controls have to be carefully adjusted to cool a workplace effectively and efficiently. So using a fan in your own work area may interfere with the way the HVAC system is supposed to work. Turning on a fan may help to cool you off, but at times can actually make things hotter for others in the facility. So be sure to talk to your supervisor about what you can and can't do to cool your work area. As we've seen, heat can create real hazards in a workplace. But understanding the problems it presents and knowing how to avoid them can help you to work safely even when the heat is on. Let's review. Too much heat can create a number of problems for our bodies. Take the time to get used to working at higher temperatures. Do it gradually. When it's hot, drink water and sports drinks regularly to replenish your fluids and electrolytes. And eat only light, cool meals during the workday. Dress in light-colored cotton or cotton blend clothing as well. Use engineering controls to help you stay cool whenever possible. And know how to recognize heat-related illnesses and what to do if you or a coworker develops one. Now that you understand the hazards that heat can create and know how to handle heat-related illnesses, you can help to make sure that you and your coworkers stay cool and healthy on the job every day.